Hey everybody, it's Four Kids of My Kids Are Loud, and today we are going to be reading Freedom's Gifts, a Juneteenth story by Valerie Wesley, illustrated by Sharon Wilson. This is not going to be a good day, June said to herself as she sat on the back porch peeling red apples. The day was June 19th, the year 1943. A cool breeze blew, and the Texas sun roasted the top of June's head. She could hear the squeak of Aunt Marshall's rocking chair and the soft song her mother hummed as she rolled out the crust for an apple pie. June glanced down the road that stretched in front of her like a long, dusty ribbon. Her father was coming home today, just in time for Juneteenth. He left two weeks ago for New York City. Before he left, June had traced his route with her finger on an old, wrinkled map. Each year, June's father made the trip to New York City to pick up her cousin Lily. Lily usually came to visit in August, but this time she was coming earlier and staying longer. When June thought about Lily, her mouth puckered up tight as if she sucked on a lemon. You finished with those apples yet? I want to get the pie in the oven, June's mother called from the kitchen. Almost, June answered. When I was your age, Aunt Marshall said to June, I would have peeled two dozen apples by now. Sugared them, baked them, served them, and cleaned up after them, too. Aunt Marshall stopped rocking and peered over her glasses at June. Now I'm my age, and I don't have nothing to do but rock. Aunt Marshall was June's great-great-aunt. Great-great-great-aunt. Her, her voice is scratchy and low and sounded like a creaky rocking chair. Most days, Aunt Marshall just rocked in her chair, remembering. But sometimes, Aunt Marshall just... Um, Aunt Marshall talked about what her life had been like when she was June's age. She loved to talk about her sister Sophie and all the other kinfolk who had died long before June was born. June enjoyed listen listening to Aunt Marshall's tales. Aunt Marshall was very old. Some people say she was the oldest woman in Texas. She was born when African Americans were enslaved and records of their births and deaths weren't kept. She was about the same age as June when the first Juneteenth was celebrated. June 19th, 1865, the day when black people who lived in Texas were finally free. Aunt Marshall said suddenly and tilted her head as, to listen, as if to listen to something far away. June listened too. She heard the rumbling sound of her father's red truck as it turned the last bend in the road. He's home, Mama, he's home! June jumped up from her apple peeling and ran down the steps toward the truck. It stopped right in front of her in a swirl of dust. Her father laughed as he jumped out of the cab and gave her a kiss. How's my June bug doing? He asked. June bug, say hello to your cousin Lily. She's had a hardship coming down here. A long, long trip, her father said in a breath. But we made it back just in time for Juneteenth picnic. You ready for the Juneteenth picnic, June bug? He asked with a smile. June smiled and nodded that she was. My, how you've grown, Lily. June's mother said when she came from the kitchen and gave Lily a hug. Lily did look grown, June thought to herself, just like a teenager. June, why don't you take Lily into the house so she can put away her bags and freshen up before the picnic? June's mother said she gave, said she gave Lily a gentle shove towards June. June made herself smile. Lily wouldn't smile back. I don't like Texas, Lily said, and poked out her mouth. You girls hurry you girls hurry up now so we can eat some of that good food your mama's been cooking for Juneteenth. June's father said. 
June took one of Lily's bags, and Lily took the other. Then the girls headed into the house. Aunt Marshall and June shared a room. Their beds stood together like two good friends. That's Aunt Marshall's bed, June warned Lily as she plopped down on her aunt's bed. You better get off. You're going to sleep in my bed with me. Aunt Marshall don't, don't like anybody sitting on her bed. You scared of her? Said Lily asked. I'm not scared of anybody. But she jumped off Aunt Marshall's bed and onto June's, which began to wobble. I'm hungry, Lily said as she slid onto the floor. Is it time to eat yet? Pretty soon. Leaf at the Juneteenth picnic, June answered. Juneteenth? What's that? It, it's... Uh, June paused. She never had to explain Juneteenth before. Everybody in Texas already knew what it was. Juneteenth is Freedom Day, she, she finally said, recalling what Aunt, Ma Aunt Marshall and her parents had told her. It's a day that the slaves in Texas were told that they were free. She was glad she remembered. Christmas is my favorite holiday, but I like Juneteenth better than Thanksgiving because there's food and a parade. And Juneteenth is better than Easter because it's because my name is a part of it. Juneteenth. That makes it special. Slaves must have been <laughs> That was a bit of a over American voice. I mean... A girl who is this, we kind of all think her voice is like, the slaves must have been dumb to not know they were free. But the slaves must have been dumb to not know they were free, said Lily. June tossed her cousin a sideways glance. Oh, Marsha's not dumb. And she didn't know she was free. She didn't know she was free, and they didn't know they were free because the masters kept it a secret. They wanted them to stay slaves so that they could work, make them work for free. So, Juneteenth is a slave holiday, Lily said firmly with a sniff. Up north, we celebrate the 4th of July. That's why my daddy went north, so our family can be at, like everybody else. Not old, timely, like down here. June didn't say anything, but her face felt hot. Soon it was time to load the truck for the Juneteenth picnic. The girls took turns carrying out the blanket. Inkets and baskets loaded with food. Aunt Marshall sat next to June's parents in the cab. June and Lily spread out, spread a blanket out in the back of the truck and sat down in it, on it. June loved to ride in the back of the truck. She loved to feel the wind in her face and watch the clouds float by. When the day finally grew cool and the sky so dark you couldn't see, June loved to count the stars. One, two, three and wish on them the way Aunt Marshall told her, told her to. But there, no, but there were no stars in the light of day. And if there had been, you knew what she would wish, that Lily would go home. Why can't I ride with the grown-ups? Lily asked. I don't want to sit on my blanket. It smells, she complained. The wind is making my eyes hurt, she whined. Lily had just gotten to Texas, and June was tired of her already. If anybody has someone who is as annoying as Lily, I, for example, I have a younger brother, and although he's cute, he can be a pain in the butt. So I know how June feels. As the truck pulled into the park, Lily pointed to the sign, large sign tacked near a water fountain, and she spelled out the words. W-H-I-T-E-S-O-N-L-Y. That sign spells whites only, Lily said. The sign was just like the ones that hung in the department stores and many other places. Those signs pointed to where June and her family could never go. June didn't think much about the signs. It was just the way things were. Does this sign mean that we can't drink the water that comes out of the water fountain? Lily asked. She sounded confused. Does that mean we can't drink the same water as white children? I'm 
I'm glad I'm not from down here. Up north, we can do what we want to go, what we want to do, and go where we want to go. We can drink anywhere we want to drink. Living here is being like a slave who can't go where she wants to go and do what she wants to do. Living in the south makes you like a slave, June, a dumb old slave, just like Juneteenth, a dumb old slave holiday. June shifted her eyes away from her cousins. She never thought much about the signs, but now they made her feel ashamed, even though they weren't her fault. The red truck pulled into the spot in the park where everybody had gathered for the Juneteenth picnic. But June couldn't forget Lily's hurtful words. They stung her like a slap. June thought about what Lily had said when they climbed out of the truck and ran to the bandstand to see what they could see. They thought about them as she thought about them as the marching band from Carver High stood straight and tall and strutted their stuff when they marched. She could still hear them as the cymbals and drums clashed together or like thunder in the bright afternoon. And when the ladies dressed in white from the Tubman Ladies' Aid Society, strolled through the crowd, offering kind words and comfort to those who needed them. June remembered what Lily had said as her parents and others spread food on the long tables, on the long tables so everybody could help themselves. June could smell a jambalaya, uh, cornbread, sausage, and the sweet pies made with the apple she peeled. But Lily's words had left a sour taste in June's mouth. The taste was still there when June dropped down onto the blanket next to Aunt Marshall. Where's that Cecilia something that reminds me of my sister Sophie? Aunt Marshall said, asked, go get that little girl, Lily. Lily was sitting on a blanket far away from everybody else. There was a plate of food beside her, but Lily hadn't eaten. June wondered if Lily hadn't eaten because she was homesick. Aunt Marshall wants to see you, she said to Lily. Why? Lily asked with a pout. I don't know, but you better come. Everybody does what Aunt Marshall says, even Mama, June warned. Lily poked out her mouth further, but followed June back to where Aunt Marshall sat. Sit down a spell and keep me company, Aunt Marshall said to Lily with a wink. June folded her arms tight. She thought that Aunt Marshall only winked at her. You're just like my big sister Sophie when she when she, we was all young, like you are all you are now, Aunt Marshall said to Lily. You got the same pretty eyes and the same frisky spirit. You're smart as an old goose, though, and couldn't nobody tell what was going to come out of that girl's mouth. June smiled a little smile. You're, you're just like Sophie come back, Aunt Marshall said. What happened to her, to Sophie? Lily asked. Gone. Just like the rest of them, Aunt Marshall said quietly. The two of you sitting together reminds me of me and Sophie. The day she found me and all we had was each other. Were you lost? Lily asked. The pet was gone and June could see concern in Lily's eyes. Before the first Juneteenth, before freedom came, Aunt Marshall answered. Tell us what was what it was like before freedom came. June asked. June hadn't heard the story before, but she loved to listen to Aunt Marshall tell it. Aunt Marshall didn't say anything for a while. Juneteenth always sets me to remember, and those times are ugly. There's so much evil and meanness. I don't want to even think about them on a day as good as this one. We were... A born grown back then, at least. We felt like it, she said softly, and her eyes got into the faraway look, the remembering look that usually told June she didn't want to be bothered. But our marshal was talking now. June stole a glance at Lily, who listened to. A butterfly swooped down 
from a stalk of weed to a flower and then finally to a twig that lay in the grass. She's fear, then we were then, and um, Marshall nodded toward the butterfly, bluebird, an ant that could crawl where it wanted. You had nothing but your mama's arms or your sisters to warm you up, up to warm up at night, like them that own, and then that own do could take your family away any time they wanted, like they did. My big sister Sophie. My Sophie. A look of sadness crossed Aunt Marsha's face, and June could see the sparkle of a tear in her eye. June knew that she was thinking of things that hurt her to remember. She was sorry she asked Aunt Marsha about all those old times. But they couldn't take your thoughts the way your mama sung softly to you. Or the way your sister's arms fell against yours, I kept them close and tight within me. And then freedom came, Lily asked, finally, two and a half years after everybody else is free. Oop, <laughs> I thought that was a grandma, but finally, two, two and a half years after everybody else is free, June answered. I made a mistake. But remembering what she had already learned, but she had already learned about that first Juneteenth. What happened that day, Aunt Marshall? Lily said. Lily asked, and June realized that Lily had never heard Aunt Marshall's story. I was in the barn that day, Aunt Marshall said gathering some eggs. I heard all this laughing and shouting and carrying on folks, screaming out like they'd lost their minds. I was scared to come out. They was making so much commotion, but I was just a little in, and I didn't know what freedom meant. Everybody was looking for kin who'd been sold or snatched. Mamas for their babies, husbands for their wives. Then Sophie found me, and I knew it must be true that freedom had come. We're f free, Marshall! Free, free, free! Sophie told me, and then she laughed. I'll remember that laugh so sweet and deep until the day I die. Are we free now? June asked. Freer than we was. That's not free. <laughs> or we could drink water whenever we want. Not just when the signs tells it, tell us to. We'll be as free as I'll be in this lifetime. Free as I'll be before I die. But not as free as you'll be someday. Sorry. I'm going to arrange it a bit cold. Um, you all have freedom's gifts. Nobody can take them away, our marshal says quietly, nodding toward Lily. Lily and June sat beside Aunt Marshall for a few more minutes. June felt sad when she thought about Aunt Marshall's tale, but she felt special too. She glanced at Lily. She couldn't tell if Lily felt like she did or what was going inside her or what was gonna come out of her mouth just like Aunt Marshall and Sophie wanna play? Lily asked after a minute June nodded the girls sat on the hot ground and played well um, well I lost my place yes while the ladies from the ten man well, the ladies from the Ten Man Ladies Aid Society gathered up their baskets until the band had put away their instruments and after the Juneteenth sun had set pink and yellow in the Texas sky. Then the two girls helped load the truck. It was dark and quiet in the back of the truck. As June and Lily lay side by side on the ride home, June thought about the butterfly that had been freer than Aunt Marshall and the water fountain that only white people could drink from. 
And then she thought about Freedom's gifts and how they would belong to her and Lily, like they never had belonged to Aunt Marshall and Sophie. They made her feel proud and it was a little sad too. You asleep? Lily asked. Are you? Do not ask back. Would I ask if you were? Would I ask if you were? Lily said like she was mad, but then she laughed. Dean laughed too and wondered if Lily's laugh was like Sophie's used to be. A sweet, deep one that Aunt Marshall will never forget. I'm going to ask my daddy if I can come down here in June from now on. We don't have anything like Juneteenth up north, Lily said after a minute. June didn't say anything. She just smiled to herself. Juneteenth, she decided, had been a good day, as, a Ju as good as a June day could be. Here's an author's note. Juneteenth commemorates the emancipation of African Americans in Texas. The Emancipation Proclamation... That is, that feels pretty good to say. Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> Try it. Issued by Abraham Lincoln on January 1st, 1863, did not bring freedom to all slaves. African Americans remained enslaved in Texas. Some people believe it was because the masters didn't want to free their slaves. Others say it was because the news were so slow to reach Texas. On June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger landed on Galveston Island and proclaimed the sovereignty of the United States over Texas and the freedom of all who had been enslaved two and a half years after slavery had ended in other parts of the South. From that day on, June 19th, the 19th of June was celebrated by black Texans with picnics and parades. June was made a Texas state holiday in 1979. June, June, today, Juneteenth is celebrated by African Americans in many parts of the United States. The and that is the end for Freedom's Gifts. I hope you enjoy all these Juneteenth stories as much as I do. And... It may not be when you're watching this, but now, for me, it is um, just two days from Juneteenth, and I am so excited to celebrate it, this wonderful, wonderful holiday, and because before, when I was younger, this this will actually be the first time that I celebrate Juneteenth, at least that I know of, because... We have not heard of Juneteenth. I have not heard of Juneteenth before, and recently I learned. And so, happy, happy, sir, close to Juneteenth. Bye.